Um, just recently went up on there. We do all the financials, uh, core financials, as well as um, the supply chain applications. Uh, we use mobile supply chain management along with our handhelds. We're looking at, at moving into point of view. Live from New York, it's The Q. Covering Inforum 2016, brought to you by Inform. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. Welcome back to New York City, everybody. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship product. We go out to the events and we extract the signal from the noise. The folks from Foot Locker are here. We're going to talk a little sports, a little human capital management. Alexis Trigo is here. Uh, he is the director of store capability. He's joined by Robert uh, Perkins, who's the VP of talent management at Foot Locker, Inc. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you, you coming on. All right, Robert, we're going to start. Okay. So Foot Locker, the brand is all about like cool, sports stuff, right, sports gear. Right. I got to ask you, Kevin Durant trade. Thumbs up, thumbs down, is he selling out? What's the deal? Ooh, I'm going to probably get myself in trouble <laughs> here, but uh, I have to give it a thumbs down. I think it's not going to create parity in the league. It was a bad trade. I was surprised they didn't block it the way they blocked Chris Paul when he was trying to go to the LA Lakers, so So I yeah, yeah it's kind of down. team stacking, right? I mean, I'm a Celtics fan, so it was kind of bummed that, right. you know, yeah. they, but they were in the running, a little, little tease, but, right. uh, but so anyway, so Alexis, tell us about you know, Foot Locker, what you guys do, what your roles are. Yeah, so I mean, uh, we're, we're a leading global athletic retailer. Uh, we operate in 23 countries. We have multiple different brands, but uh, we curate the best uh, different type of uh, sneakers and athletic apparel and uh, experiences with some of our great brand, brand partners from Nike to Adidas, et cetera. Okay, so you got store capability and talent management. What does that right. mean to people who don't necessarily know your yeah. organization? You know, from a talent management standpoint, really our team's focus is on helping to build leadership and organizational capability, making sure that we're developing the talent out there that can help to move our business forward. Okay, yep. and, and, and so you're helping the stores find people or, or? Yeah, so what we do is actually we, we partner with our subsidiary uh, heads of operations and we look for synergies in terms of how we can actually make our assets more productive. Because um, when you think about it, it's the experience that, that really sets us apart in terms of the customer coming in. It's not just about the product, but it's also the culture around the sneaker, the culture around the player, or whatever that product's background uh, is made up of. So, you know, it's, it's figuring out ways that we can ensure that we're delivering that experience consistently in all of our properties across the globe. So is it fair to say that you envision a, like a, 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 an outcome of an interaction with a customer and you kind of work backwards from there to find the right people to deliver that outcome or is that just too prescriptive or? No, I think it's, oh, a, fair, it's, I think it's a really fair statement, right? right? There's, there's a journey the customer has, yeah. whether they uh, engage us through a brick and mortar or through an e-com component, there's something they're looking for and they vote every single day with their wallet. So, you know, that's really our key focus in mind. When we work with our brand partners, we think about our, our, our pinnacle consumers and what's that experience they're looking for? What are some of the things that drive them? You know, and they vote every single day based on the product that they buy, how much they spend, and how they wear it, and how they choose to engage with us. Yeah. So, it's an incredibly competitive business. All right, so how do you guys differentiate and how, to, how does human capital help you differentiate? Well, you know, I think from a customer experience standpoint, we hope and believe that is our differentiating um, factor. You know, the experience, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, one of the things we look at is just our candidate flow. You know, we get over 1.5 million candidates that apply for over 30,000 jobs that we have on an annual basis. So people want to work for Foot Locker. You know, it's a fun place to work. It's a fun experience. And we hope that our customers have that same experience when they come into our stores. The product knowledge of our associates, the you know extra service and attention that they pay to them to help them get what they're looking for, whether it's apparel or footwear or accessories. People talk about like a war for talent in the technology business, you know, Google versus Facebook versus Amazon. You have a, there's a war for talent, I imagine, in your business, but it's a right. much larger volume, and, and it's maybe not a belly-to-belly -belly war. It's maybe you know brand and and attracting the people into that experience. It, it, maybe talk about sort of how you do that. Sure. Yeah, you know, we, I think you kind of hit that. It, it's it's really, it's a war for talent. But the reality is, it's about the experience. And the one thing that we afford is, there's a culture out there around around the brand, about the products that we sell. And uh, as Robin mentioned, we have the 1.5 million candidates that are always seeking opportunities to work with us. You know, I think the key for us is, is helping identify 
who those right, who the specific talent is that needs to come to join us and can create that experience. And that's one of the things that we're here at Inforum and we exactly. actually partner with them to use their talent science to help us be more predictive in thinking about who we can actually bring into the organization that can help cultivate that experience. Yeah, so I was going to ask you, how does data fit in? Can you use data science and analytics to actually do a better job of targeting the right people, attracting those people, retaining them? Talk no, about and that we, yeah, so talent science is exactly that. We're using predictive behaviors to see how we can actually see uh, um, candidates that actually take an assessment against profiles that we've actually built behind the scenes with our partners at, at Infor to find individuals that will be more likely to be successful when they join our environments that that are a closer match of success for each one of the brands that we operate, whether that be Foot Locker, or Chance Sports, or a Foot Action, et cetera. Um, we're looking to bring talent in that can actually help bring that experience to life that that consumer's looking for in that segment. Is there anything that really surprised you in the data when you first started you know, going down this journey? Anything that stood out as, wow, you know, we didn't know that. Or, Okay, we knew that, but now we really have the conviction because the data supports it. Yeah, well I mean, I think everybody was surprised when we went down this road, because as we said, we don't have a problem attracting people. So, you know, the old traditional way of hiring people, which was very inconsistent, a lot of times based on likability, it was working for us, we were very successful, but when we implemented talent science, the difference we saw in terms of the increase in sales per hour of our associates and how much more the people that we were hiring through the assessment tool and having the selling behaviors that were able to um, impact the performance of the business, we saw a decrease and turnover from associates, you know, all of that having a financial impact to the bottom line, and even the administrative efficiencies of just uh, really recruiting fewer people or needing to recruit fewer people and having that sort of accuracy of picking the right people has had a huge impact uh, for us operationally. Has having that data available changed? I heard one of the speakers this morning in the keynote talking about transparency. I mean, has, has it affected transparency and has, has that allowed you to, I don't know if it's just create you know, greater loyalty amongst employees or you know, talk about that a little bit if sure. it's relevant. Well, when you think about how these, uh, Robert mentioned we, we've been able to reduce turnover. So the, right. these, the associates are more engaged, they're staying longer with us, they're adapting to the selling behaviors quicker and, and, and adapting to the, the journeys that the consumers are looking for. So, you know, um, I, wouldn't know, I wouldn't necessarily say transparency is the right word, but rather there's, uh, they're adapting more to the environment that they're in. And I think the data's helped us to isolate what those, de those behaviors are and that, that, that DNA that, uh, that Infor calls it that allows us to be able to predict and uh, prioritize and pre-select certain And then align with that. And align with hey, that, you, yeah. know, you have a younger workforce, presumably, yes. right? And, yes. And, and they, that the younger workforce, you know, from all the data I've seen, looking for different things than maybe you know, the, the greatest generation or the, the, the baby boomers. Right, I mean, yes, money's always important to everybody, but they're looking for a, a sense of belonging, a sense of being part of a team, a sense of being part of that mission, right? Do you find right. that? Yeah, I, th I think so. I, I think we would both agree with that. You know, the reality is, it's a culture. There's something great about being part of a Foot Locker's organization, whether that means the product, the, the celebrities, the athletes. There's so much that, that our brand brings to life that you know, you go into these stores and the teams are just excited about what they get to do every single day. And every single day is a new opportunity. You're never meeting the same customer twice in the sense that you're always having a revolving door of people that are coming in, so it's always new. Um, sure, you, 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 built a, you built your clients that come back, but it's always a new experience. And it's, it's the product that creates that, it's the love of the culture, it's the love of what these sneakers do. Um, that, that keeps everyone coming back and wanting to work for our organization. And I think we created a winning culture. Um, you know, I think people feel a lot of uh, recognition and rewards are in place, both individually and as a team, in terms of how they participate in the success of their store, participate in the success of the company. We're really good at internal mobility. Uh, most of our associate, most of our promotions come from within. Very, uh, very infrequently do we actually go to the outside to have to promote to management positions within the store. So they realize when they're signing up, they're signing up for more for a career and not necessarily a job within Foot Locker, well, which that's also huge. helps us. That's with huge for people. The, yep. the company's willingness to promote from within and you yep. sending that signal is 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 big. Um, and of course, the other great thing about sports is it's it's just always changing. There's always a new right. star, so you guys are good good spot. All right, we're uh, we're out of time, but just. Each of you, last thoughts on uh, Inforum 2016, takeaways, things you, you learned? 
you know, it's a great opportunity to connect with other clients and see some of the challenges that they're experiencing and recognizing that you know, we're in this together and um, what some solutions that Infor can help us as we think about our long-term long plans around talent and uh, being successful out there. Right, and I love the uh, benefits of the client conference. As Alexis said, opportunity to understand how other clients are um, applying their different tools within their workplace helps to give us some insight on how we might expand our relationship with M4. So, so far, enjoying it. It's been a good learning experience. Great, excellent. Yep. People, culture, innovation, sports, we're bringing it to, to, <laughs> to our CUBE audience. Alexis and Robert, thanks very much for coming right, to theCUBE. Thank, thank you, David, appreciate it. All right, okay. keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this short thank break. You. As colleges and universities use an increase